With the introduction of Android 7.0 Nougat, Google introduced a couple of changes to how the Android operating system works. Now this won't affect devices that ship with Android 6.0 and lower, but if your smartphone like the Pixel and Pixel XL or a tablet has shipped with Android 7.0 or higher, then it is likely implemented these changes. These changes have made certain modifications like TWRP and SuperSU a little more difficult to implement than normal. This is why it took so long for Chainfire to release SuperSU for the Pixel phones and this is why Dee's Troy has only been able to release an alpha version of TWRP for these phones. And the two changes I'm talking about is the full disk encryption which has been changed to file based encryption and then Google changed the way um, partitions are implemented. The partitions on the Pixel and Pixel XL there are two, two partitions or a number of them and this has made it a bit more difficult to implement the basic modifications that we've come to know. Now Dee's Troy has just gotten around to release an alpha version of TWRP for the Pixel and Pixel XL. I'm going to show you how to install that on your phone right now, but first I want to tell you a couple of issues and bugs that are currently affecting the alpha build. And he says if you try to restore a Nandroid backup, there is a bug that will sometimes trigger, not all the time, but sometimes trigger that will prov that will actually um, automatically wipe the data on your phone. This doesn't happen all the time, but in his testing he has found a few times where it has completely wiped all of the data on their phone. So it's advisable to stay away from doing a restore on Twerp right now. TWRP for the Pixel and Pixel XL also does not work with the multi-user feature. So if you ever need to install modifications on other users, it's advised to stay away from TWRP at this time. And lastly, SuperSU is currently not working with the alpha build of TWRP. TWRP needs to modify a file, and this file is also modified by the installation of SuperSU right now. So if root access is required for you, then again it is advised to stay away from TWRP for this alpha build. Chainfire will likely need to release an updated version of SuperSU so that the two modifications can coexist. So now that we got all of that out of, the, out of the way, let's get started on this. You will need to have a couple of things set up beforehand. If you aren't sure how to do that, then check the description below this video and I'll have a link to the full tutorial that will walk you through all of those steps. For example, you will need to have the bootloader unlocked. So to do that, you'll need to have developer options enabled. You need to do OEM unlocking and as well have USB debugging mode. You'll also need to have your USB drivers installed, which of course go along with unlocking the bootloader. And again, you're going to have to have ADB and fastboot tools installed on your computer. You're also going to need to download two files from the TWRP website. That link again will be in the full tutorial for this guide. And it comes with a zip file that you're going to need to save to the internal storage of the Pixel or Pixel XL. And then it comes with an image file 
that you're going to need to either move or copy into the same directory as your ADB and Fastboot tools. So once you have all of that set up, we're going to plug the Pixel XL into the computer with a USB cable. If you get this allow USB debugging access, just tap on always allow and then tap on OK. Then we're going to boot up into fast boot mode. And again, if you don't know how to do this, check the full tutorial as I'll walk you through all of that. Once you have downloaded the TWRP image file, go ahead and move and copy that, like I said, to the same directory that your ADB and Fastboot tools are located in. Then go ahead and rename that file to just twrp.img, just to make things easier. And then you're going to want to double click on the minimal ADB and Fastboot shortcut that you can create whenever you install these tools. If you don't have minimal ADB and fastboot, then just launch a command prompt and then navigate to the same directory that your ADB and fastboot tools are located in. And then we're gonna have we're gonna need to type out the command fastboot space boot and then space either the location of your TWRP image file, and since we have moved that. To the same directory, we just need to type out twrp.img. Once we have the fast boot space boot command typed out, we're just going to need to press enter on the keyboard. That's going to send the boot image file to our pixel and pixel XL, and then it's going to boot us right into the TWRP recovery project. Now Destroy reminds you that if you do not get to enter your pin pattern or password, if you have one set up, then you just go ahead and reboot the phone and try again. Again, this is alpha. So once we get here, unless you just want to keep it read only, we're going to swipe the allow modification arrows to the right. You should know if you want to keep it read only or not. If you want TWRP installed all the time, you'll need to swipe the arrows. But if you just want TWRP installed for this particular boot session, then you can keep it read only. Once you get here, we're going to need to tap on install. Then we need to browse to either the download section the folder or wherever you have that zip file that we downloaded earlier. We need to tap on that zip file. And then we need to swipe the white arrows to the right to begin the installation process. Now this is a bit abnormal. Usually we just need to flash the boot image but since there are two partitions, we need to flash this zip file. This zip file will install TWRP onto both partitions. Once you see that's done, you can go ahead and press the reboot system button. Now, if I did not hold down the volume down button right here, it would just go ahead and boot up into Android, and I'll show you that in a minute. But I want to show you that, go ahead and unplug this, that we can boot into recovery mode, and that this me, and then this will take us right into TWRP. I just want to show you that it's fully installed and it's not tethered anymore. And again, we're just going to swipe the white arrows to the right to keep the modification done. And again, we have TWRP installed. So just to show you that everything is done, we're going to tap the reboot button. 
and then tap on system it's gonna that's gonna reboot us back into the Android operating system And just like with booting into TWRP, I just want to show you that it will boot up into Android. It's not going to cause a boot loop. And everything works fine.